Hello, sports fans and baseball fans. It's me, Sportsman Z, and I'm here with my man, Chris Dufour. And we are going to have a discussion about Major League Baseball. We're going to uh, recap our impressions of the All-Star Game and of what happened in the uh, first half of the season. And then we're going to talk about a few things we might expect to see in the second half of the season and how we think things could possibly go there. Trade deadline. Trade deadline. Maybe a little bit of the trade deadline, although I don't really have any idea who's going to go anywhere, but I'm sure Chris has some definite ideas. And um, we're going to talk about one notable person that keeps getting bandied about as far as trades go, but we're getting ahead of ourselves. So... Um, we watched the All-Star game, Chris and I did. Got off to a very exciting start with two deep fly balls to the corner outfields that Adolis Garcia and Rosa Reina both made um, catches at the last second at the wall. Very, very exciting start to the game. Um, and it was, again, it was a good game. Obviously a good game. The National League won for the first time in like nine or ten years. Eleven years. Eleven years. And uh, they won three to two. So it was a good game. Um, what other impressions, what other things did you think about the game itself? Well, I mean, I liked the... Uh, I was glad the National League won. I'm an American League fan, but obviously. But uh, I'd like to see that game balance out a little bit. I mean, it's just an exhibition game nowadays. I think it probably means less than it ever has, but still, it's nice. It doesn't mean less than it ever has to those guys playing. It just, I don't, I don't know if the fans, right? you know, back in the 70s and 80s, it, it was, uh, you know, you had to win it, and then it meant, and then it meant, uh, even when they had home field advantage of the World Series involved, that was, I thought at least it gave it a little more meaning. But besides all that, I mean, it was, uh, you know, it was, it was a great spectacle with the home run derby the night before, which was uh, fun. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it was fun, and it was good to see. I didn't like the uniforms. I'd, I'd rather them be in their uh, own team uniform. I always, yes. I always liked that. I mean, that was uh, one thing that I really wish they would go back to doing was uh, is having every player wear their own team uniforms and do the introductions the way they used to do them, where they would have all of the uh, backups already standing on the line, and they would step forward and just tip their cap when they were announced. And then have the manager come out and then the starting lineup come out. The way, I think the way they did it was a little bit too showy and, um, and, and also having jerseys for the American League and National League was, I, you know, I'd rather see them get away from that. So, yeah. I mean, it's just obviously a sign of the times and we're two old men. So, yeah. But, yeah. you know, I would just, it, it just means more to me to see the identity of the team than, those ugly, I, hey, my opinion, ugly jerseys. Right. I'm sure people love them, but I now, uh, where, now where we disagree is the talking to the players during the game That's on the true. field. I love um, it. Yeah, I love it. I think it's you the love it. Thing ever. I'm not a big fan, and I hate it. I don't even like it during the game when they talk in the regular season when they talk to the managers in the dugout or the pitcher from the day before. Just let the players play the game. I wish they could do it during the World Series. Three yeah. and two, bases loaded. You got to make a pitch, and you're talking to the pitcher. I love that. <laughs> right. I'm sure the teams probably wouldn't, but I would love that. Now, one general overarching. Uh, now, so is uh, anything else on the uh, All Star Game itself? No. Not okay. Really. One general overarching thing that we should talk about from the first half of the season was the impact of the new rules, which I think both of us can agree, for the most part, have been positive. Yeah, I, I mean, I mean, the games are much faster, and it's it's kind of a uh, fun to have to make an adjustment as a fan, you know, like uh, when the games are going to end, and you know, the fact that the games can end between two and two and a half hours now on a regular basis is right. pretty exciting, and I and I I like the pace. I don't mind the uh, right. I don't and mind the, the penalties for you know. Yeah, and there's a there's an uptick in stolen bases, which makes the game more exciting. Yeah, I, think, I mean, I would agree. It's, it's not a, but it's not as big as I thought. And you know what's interesting too is the shift. <clears throat> they thought that was going to be a huge change to in bat, to batting average, you know. But it's mm -hmm. not. It really has not had as much of an impact as uh, I think some people 
might have thought. Right. You know, some of the data-driven people. Uh, <clears throat> I'm glad they did away with the shift. I, I mean, I was tired of it, but uh, it really hasn't had as dramatic an effect as... as well, I think, I mean, I, I think I read something even back when the shift was being used that said that the shift generally um, against, like, a left-handed dead pull hitter, it only takes four or five hits a season away from yeah, tell like, that to Joey Gallo. The guy, yeah, well. That dude loved like 20 hits. So there's some guys that adjusted, some guys that couldn't, you know. But yeah. uh, <laughs> I think overall, we're looking at a faster pace of game. We're looking at uh, pitchers not lollygagging out on the mound for back of a, uh, you know, for lack of right. a better term. The batters have to get in the box. They have to stay in the box. I, yeah. That That's eliminated a lot of the stuff that had slowed down the game. And I think that's, that's, I, I'm a, I'm a, I'm really pleased. Yeah, overall, it's been it's been the results have been positive, and uh, I I think I'm we're we're both in the uh, bigger camp of people that like the impact that it, the rule changes have had, and uh, think they're 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 pretty positive so far. So in the first half, uh, we have had some team surprises. Um, Baltimore, ba- yes, Baltimore Cincinnati. is only two games behind Tampa Bay. Cincinnati is Arizona. winning their division. Arizona is hanging with LA in the NL West. Uh, Miami's in second place in the NL East behind um, uh, Atlanta. They are many games behind them because Atlanta has the best record in baseball, but they're right there. It's um, funny too because if you think back to our season preview video, I was, I we were talking about we were predicting the division winners, mm-hmm. and we're and I was like, listen, there's going to be a team that's going to not, we're not even going to mention that's going to be out there. Mm-hmm. And instead of one, there's been like four teams that are yeah. contending, and and kind of out of nowhere. The I mean, not I mean that's harsh to say because no baseball team in the majors is really out of nowhere, but Arizona. Miami competing as well as they have with yeah. their record. The Reds, uh, the Orioles were going to be good, but man, this good, you know, with yeah. the two games out. And what's interesting about the Orioles is, you know, a lot of the people that know the Orioles better than I do think they're going to fade, and I think they're not going to fade, you know? Yeah, I don't think it, they will. I think the Rays uh, are having a little bit of trouble right now, and I'm not sure <laughs> exactly where they're going to kind of right the ship. You know, they've lost some, they've right. had some heavy injuries to their pitching staff. Yeah. And some of those guys are not coming back. Yeah, Springs, McClanahan will be back, be back, but he's one guy. Yeah. So, and Glasnow has not been the same this year. So it will be interesting because the narrative around the Rays is, hey, they just keep finding these guys and bringing them out there and they're producing. But I think all of a sudden they're not, you know. Right. They're guys that aren't producing. I mean, their their lineup is producing, but that pitching staff is kind of crumbling a bit. And I wonder, and then the interesting thing about that is, the Orioles, their pitching staff, their lineup is is actually producing, but their pitching staff has has kind of uh, overproduced. Yeah. And so can they hold on in the second half? And then obviously the the question there is, if you look at the AL East, all five teams are over five hundred. Right. And so even even if you look at the last place Red Sox, you yeah. know they're two games out of a wild card, the last wild card spot right now. So right. and I think nine games uh, at the end of the All Star break is not that far to win the division. I don't think the Red Sox are going to win the division, but what I'm saying is, if you look at the Yankees, the Blue Jays, the Orioles, and the Rays, any one of those four teams could get hot enough to win that division. Right. There's a lot of games left to be played. Yes. And there and there those four teams are separated by I believe eight games. I mean, yeah. and the Red Sox, the five teams are separated by nine. But I'm just saying the Red Sox have more teams to climb. But you know, I, I think even if the Yankees, yeah, there's scenarios for each of those teams to win that division. Right. So that will be interesting. And um, an interesting point that if the if the playoffs were to begin today, the American League matchups would be the Rays versus the Rangers, the Astros versus the Guardians, and the Blue Jays versus the Orioles with the Yanks, Red Sox, and Twins just missing in the American League. And in the National League, it would be the Braves versus the Dodgers, the Giants versus the Reds, and the D-backs versus the Marlins. So it'll be interesting to see if all of those teams end up being the ones that make it, or if a couple of these teams that are on the outside fringes sneak in before the end of the season. 
Yeah, I mean, it's a, there's a lot of teams still left with uh, with a chance to make the playoffs. Yeah. And I think the first two teams get a bye. So, uh, we ha- I don't know if those matchups are exactly accurate, but those right. are the teams that will be in the playoffs if, if it all ended today. Yeah. But it'll be interesting because, I mean, look at the, you know, in the AL Central, you have a very – La- it's not a it's not a uh, it's not an attractive race but it's no. a race the twins and the indians right. are neck and neck even though they're both like hovering around 500 or under it right they go every right. day it changes and neither of those teams i mean obviously those teams are flawed i mean the twins i don't know you know and with the the al central they're looking at the fact that the only team that's going to make the playoffs is the team that wins the al central right that's it so yeah. I mean, and they, and how worthy of a team will that be? We'll see. Yeah. I mean, that's funny because they could. I suppose they could get hot. The Indians or the Twins have enough starting pitching where if they all of a sudden all three they had three starters on a on an incredible roll in the pocket, so to speak, then they could win it. I suppose. But uh, the Twins lineup it worries me, and so does the Indians for that matter. So who knows? So, I mean, the, the Indians are having some people underperform. Like Jimenez has taken a step back from his production last year, and Oscar's was. Oscar Gonzalez disappeared off the face of the planet. Yeah. So, uh, you know, we'll see. We'll see. I mean, but Josh Naylor's having a good year. So, I mean, you never know at this point of the year. And then out west, you got the Rangers. Holy cow. I know, the Rangers. Which were supposed to be really good last year. They tanked. Yeah. Now the, all the guys they signed last year to be good, uh, you know, have really stepped right. up. Like Seager and Simeon are having yeah, good years. Yeah, Seager had like a, what, a 20-game hitting streak yeah, or something? Yeah, I mean, he's hitting over 350. And yeah. uh, and Josh Young, Young has come up. Young has come up and is, is playing a solid third base for them. And Adoles Garcia is having a great year. And Nate Lowe at first base is doing well. I mean, they, they have a lot of uh, production right now from their batters. And then Avaldi has just come in and solidified that rotation like crazy. Yeah. I mean, I don't know what the Red Sox – we're thinking when they evaluated that he was done, but he clearly <laughs> was not, right? Right. Uh, so that I think the Rangers will probably walk away with that division. Although the Astros are close, I don't know why I just said that because you know yeah the Astros, they're two games behind. They're two so. games behind, and they and they have a pedigree, but again their rotation's banged up, so they're mm-hmm. going to try to solidify that at, at the trade deadline, I imagine. Yeah. And then the NL, you mentioned the Braves. That's kind of, I would say, of any race that we're talking about, that one's over, any division race. Yeah, as probably... far as winning the East. Yeah. Right. And then uh, you got the Marlins, who are going to fight for a spot somehow, fight for a spot, which is really interesting because their young players are are coming up and making such a difference. But how teams manage these, start, these young starting pitchers they've been re- relying on in the first half, the second half, how they manage those innings, and I know you don't, you don't like to talk about that, but that'll be interesting. Yeah, because that's what they're going to do, whether you like it or not. They're going to try to manage those innings because some of these guys haven't thrown, you know, some guy. The, the, one of the young stars on the Marlins, I think, his career high is like ninety innings or something. So, yeah, you know, how much can he use them down the stretch? And they're going to try to manage that. So, that's all going to play into who wins and who right. makes the playoffs. And the Marlins, Orioles, and Reds are doing this mainly with their young talent. Oh, without a doubt. So, yeah. I mean, the Reds uh, and L.E. De La Cruz, I mean, that's the biggest story in the planet right now, right? I mean, yeah. I mean, what he did the other day, stealing three bases, but he also hits 485 foot home runs. I mean, mm-hmm. he seemingly can do it all right now. And you got a Rise who is toying well, with 400, 400 batting average. 383, yeah. yeah so. I mean, he's, uh, he's a, he's a magic, magic man with the bat right now. Yeah. Uh, so he's obviously helping them, but they got some good soft players over there, like Jesus Sanchez, Garrett Cooper, uh, Brian De La Cruz. Yeah. You know, they, they've had some young guys also step. Those guys are all young too, and they've stepped up a little bit. Uh, I wonder if the Marlins can keep winning with Joey Wendell as their starting shortstop. Yeah, but I think you know, obviously in this house, we think yes. Westchester product. Yeah, big so, fan of yeah. big fan of Joey Wendell. So we'll see. Uh. And then in the what the central, obviously you got the Reds, and they're being pushed by the Brewers. The Brewers, which were kind of expected, but mm-hmm. I mean the Cardinals are the yeah the Cardinals. The, surprise. the Cardinals in the NL were a very big disappointment, and I think the White Sox have turned out to be a pretty big disappointment. The Cardinals and the White Sox, and that's interesting too, because what does that affect? That affects the deadline, right? Mm-hmm. So are those two going to be you know big sellers? You know, yeah. and I expect. I expect the Cardinals will be because uh, it, was, uh, it just sounds like they're trying to 
create a roster, a winning roster for next year. Now they're going to have to make determinations. Is a is a 33, 34 year old Nolan Arenado going to be uh, the best piece they can have at third base next year? If right. they trade him and get other pieces, will they be more? Will they be deeper because they traded him? Or you know? Goldschmidt. Goldschmidt, Goldschmidt too, could also be traded. Story. I mean, there's a lot. Uh, O'Neill could be traded. Uh, you know, Edmund could be traded. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, even even Wilson Contreras could be traded if someone's willing to take him. But uh, yeah. you know, obviously he's had his struggles this year. And then you know, there's a couple of their pitch. Nicholas, I expect, would could be traded. You know, yeah, <clears throat> he's 34. So I, I mean, we'll see. And then the, of course the White Sox. They have many pieces, and what are they going to do? How are they going to reshape their roster? Are they going to yeah. reshape their roster? Are they going to try to run it back again and see if everyone right. improves? Giolito could be gone. Uh, you know, maybe Kopech. I doubt Kopech, but maybe. You certainly want to trade him over Cease. I don't think they're going to trade Cease because right. they control him for three more years. Yeah. Uh, but, I mean, look at the the offensive pieces like uh, Sheets and, uh, you know, uh, Mon- Moncada, maybe, uh, mm-hmm. you know, maybe Larry Garcia. Right. I don't know. What do you think? You're the one. Well, no, Larry Garcia is not on their active roster. Well, there so you go. He's not even going to be picked up. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, I mean, I think we've we've discussed uh, off camera. There's a few players that the White Sox have that they're, they're definitely they're not going to trade. Um, Eloy Jimenez, Cease. Um, Probably Vaughn they won't trade. I Vaughn imagine. and uh, who was the other one? Robert they're not going to trade. Robert, yeah, yeah, Robert they 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 locked Robert up to a to a like semi long deal um, as a rookie. So yeah, he, they want to keep him. So um, Tim but, Anderson possible trade candidate? Yeah, I think Tim Anderson's a possible trade candidate. I think really anybody else yeah. that you could name is possible. Giolito, um, Lynn. Those are those Lansley, are possible. Yeah. Those are possible guys that they could move. Um, and the Cardinals, man, I mean, one statistic on the Cardinals that I found amazing was they went a month where they allowed w- almost one run per inning. So their pitching has been terrible. Yeah, it really has been, and their defense hasn't been great, and their offense hasn't been great. So it's all been a yeah a big pile of poop for the Cardinals <laughs> this year. Like, and, not not expectedly either. So right. So, so uh, and then in the West you got the Dodgers and the Diamondbacks and the Giants even fighting it and out. And the Giants. Yeah, the yeah. Giants have kind of surprised me a little bit because so, mm-hmm. they had some trouble. Like Ross Stripling, their their free agent pitching, he hasn't worked out at all, but they're still competing, you know. And uh, yeah, they've had some serious injuries too. But uh, you know, but and they sent Joey Bart back to the minor leagues. I mean, it's just. Mm-hmm. Uh, some guys that they expected to work out haven't, and yet here they are, you know, still competing. Jack right. Peterson, and uh, you know, they've had some young guys. Uh, Thyro Estrada has done well. And, yeah. Uh, Brandon Crawford's had a, I don't want to say a resurgence, but he's he's steadily, steady, steady as it goes for Brandon, and he's like 36 years old. Yes, he is. He's getting up there. Yeah. Uh, but we'll see. That, that'll be an interesting race. you got to think the Dodgers are going to make, uh, the biggest move at the trade deadline because they have the most prospects to deal. Yeah. So on MLB.com, uh, they had seven storylines to look at in the second half, but I wrote down four of them that I found interesting that we could discuss. The first one is, what will Shohei Otani do and where will he do it? Now, I know you are in the camp that says that the Angels are not going to trade him. They well, they should. I, you know, they should trade him. I just don't know if they will. You know, I just, I don't know if Artie's going to let go. He's stubborn. Yeah. And, and he probably thinks he's still got a shot to sign him, which, I mean, I suppose he does. So. Yeah, I guess it depends. Until it's over, yeah. you got a shot. Yeah. So, um, you know, I think that they, I agree with you that they should. And I think maybe they will, but I think it's going to take, it's going to take the right deal. Um, I mean, it should be noted that last summer I was also very uh, uh, sure that the Nationals were not going to trade Soto, a young mm-hmm. 23-year-old, 4-year-old guy with controllable years, uh, and they did. So, yeah. I mean, obviously anything's possible. I just, yeah. Right. 
So uh, another storyline to follow is will Acuna uh, make the power, will he make power speed history? Mm. What are you talking about like there? A, like a 40-40 man. Like in like, Seiko. But a, yeah, but well, only better. He could has a chance to make be a lot better in stolen bases. He could be up around 70 or 80 stolen bases. Um, and the power... Yeah, can he can he hit forty home runs and steal seventy bases? That'll be interesting to see. Yeah, that will be interesting to see. I mean, he's and thank goodness he's back and in uh, full health and playing the way he is. Yeah. I mean, obviously he's a front runner for the NL MVP at this point. So where he goes with his stats, the sky's the limit. And the Braves need him. So right, you know, we'll see. And he's uh, fast enough. And will will Judge return from his torn ligament. toe ligament? Yeah. So. Yeah, that's I mean, who question. knows that? That's a medical question. I, I mean, I suppose he will return, and if they're at any, I mean, if they're uh, obviously if they're in a playoff contention, he's they're going to try to get him back. And then yeah. if they fall out of contention, which I don't think is almost even possible in the American League for the Yankees to be out of contention for at least the third wild card, then I suppose they they won't rush him back, or they won't bring try to bring him back. You know, depends. Yeah. I mean, it's. I've never heard of a toe ligament torn disease, so I don't know how yeah. that affects. I mean, obviously, it's going to affect your balance and how you can run in the outfield. So they are discussing surgery for it, but Judge has ruled out surgery before the season ends. Yeah. So well, he wants to. Yeah, he wants to try he to wants come to back. try to be around if they need him. Or, yeah. or, well, they need him. They obviously need him because their record without him is dramatically different than their record with him. But and I then mean, the question that we kind of touched on a little bit is: Will the Reds keep cruising? In the second half. Well, they're not cruising. Well, but. yeah, but will they will they keep this <laughs> up? Can they keep this up? I mean, um, I don't know because, again, with the Orioles and the Marlins and the Reds, uh, maybe I mean the D-backs, the D-backs have the luxury of having Kelly and Gallon, which is unbelievable mm-hmm. if you think about it. Those yeah. two are studs. Uh, but those other three teams do not have – the starting pitching that the proven starting pitching in a, uh, in a pennant right. race, right? So it's gonna be <coughs> it's gonna be really interesting to see if those if those three pitching staffs can hold up. In my opinion, yeah. right? Uh, or if maybe the Orioles or the Marlins get somebody like Lance Lynn or or Marcus Giolito Stroman or, or Giolito. Yeah. Sure, I mean all three of those teams, all three of those guys should be traded. In my opinion. Mm-hmm. And all three of those teams need to get one of those guys. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, I think Texas really wants Lynn too. Texas could use a boost, I guess, in the rotation too. Right. Although their lead is, well, their lead's two games, so yeah, they need some help. Yeah. Uh, but you know, honestly, you've got if you're Baltimore, Cincinnati, and Florida, you have to realize you your rotation needs some stability and some kind of proven playoff pitcher, or at mm-hmm. least. Uh, Playoff yeah. run pitcher, playoff stretch run pitcher, Lynn Stroman, Giolito have all done that to some extent, you know. Yeah. Uh, so we'll see. I mean, Giolito just got divorced. So I, where is he mentally? You know, yeah. that's that's you know that yeah, all that kind of stuff comes into the factor. So, yeah, it does. I mean, you're talking about the you know you're talking about human beings with right. with things making that crazy that. money, but they're still they're still human beings. So mm-hmm. that kind of stuff affects them. So I don't know. Uh, it'll be interesting, I think, you know, but I think the Orioles and the Marlins and the uh, the Reds are crazy if they don't if they if they don't go out and get a starting pitcher. And there's going to be pitchers traded that we're not even talking about, obviously, that we have no right. idea. I mean, who knows? Maybe the you know the A's will probably trade as many older guys as they can if they have any. I don't know if they have, but uh, even guys like Caprillion or somebody might try to somebody might try to catch lightning in a bottle with him or something. You know? Yeah. We'll see. I don't know. Uh, but so, it, yeah, it's going to be. I mean, I've, uh, I've, I think I've touched on everything that I want to talk about. Anything else you that comes to mind for you? No, just keep a keep an eye on the on the on the season. It's going to be an exciting finish, and uh, you know this trade deadline coming up on looming on the thirty first will will be uh, will be interesting. It's too bad. I will say. I, it, you know, the Angels, I thought, were contending for a playoff spot, and then Trout's going to be out for a couple months, yeah. six to eight weeks with a hamate bone, uh, broken hamate bone. So that's going to take a little of the excitement out of the second half. But, not, you know, there's still a lot of races and a lot of uh, trades and a lot of – Yeah, there definitely are. And a lot of things to look at. And it stars, the Cy Youngs are up in the air, both leagues. You don't – there's no real 
clear leader of the rookies of the year. I mean, you got. I mean, what can Ellie De La Cruz do in the second half? You know, that'll be interesting if he keeps this up. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, so there's a lot of things to keep an eye on. All right, it's gonna be fun. It will be just like this video was, Bobby. Yes, it was, and so or Sportsman that, Z. Sorry, that is gonna be it for me, Sportsman Z. Bob Zolke, signing off. Peace.